We're going to learn to use Minitab to create a graph, in this case a histogram. So I have a set of data, I have two sets, but we're going to start with this one. I've taken a random sample of people and asked them, how many siblings do you have? And I would like to make a histogram of their answers, of the number of siblings. So I'm going to go up to my menu here, and since I'm making a graph, I'm going to click on Graph. I want to make a histogram, so I'll move down until I get to Histogram, and I'll click Histogram. And it gives me some choices. I am making what's called a simple histogram. I don't need anything fancy about it. I just want a simple histogram. And it says graph variables. It opens up a dialog box and wants to know what variable do you want the graph of? Well, I want the graph of siblings. You'll notice it didn't give me gender as a choice because gender is a text column. You can't make a histogram of text. But siblings is what I want. So I double click siblings, or I could have clicked it once and clicked select. And now I'm going to say OK. And Minitab is going to make a graph. There we go. There's a beautiful histogram of siblings. Minitab has labeled the axes siblings because that was the name of the column, frequency because that's what you have when you have a histogram, and it's given it a rather bad title, histogram of siblings. Here we go. I've got my histogram, but I'm going to improve it a little bit. All right, first, Minitab just shows a class width for me. It shows a class width, well, from 0 to 3 is 2 bars, so each bar is 1 and a half, a class width of 1 and a half. Maybe I wanted the class width to be a whole number. <clears throat> Let's say I did. Let's say I want it to be 1. Let me fix it. So the way I would do that is I'm going to take my mouse and bring it to any of these numbers that's down here on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and I'm going to double click. And it opens up a dialog box that lets me edit the scale, which means I can edit all kinds of things about that x-axis. It isn't actually the scale I want to do, it's the classes. Minitab doesn't call them classes, it calls them bins. So I'm going to click on this tab here that says binning so that I can change the bins. Now, I have choices of midpoint or cut point. As we discussed when we learned histograms, midpoint means that the number is going to be right in the middle of the class. Cut point would mean it would be at a class boundary. It would be these points. I'm happy with midpoint, but I'm going to change the locations. Right here, you'll see I've got 0, 1.5, 3, 4.5, 6, 7.5, and so on. I'm going to change those. To do that, I'm going to click the radio button right there, that's called a radio button, that next to midpoint, cut point, positions. And then I'm going to erase these, and I'm going to write in the ones I want with spaces in between them. So I want to start at 0, and then go to 1, and then go to 2, and then go to 3, and 4, and so on, 5, 6, 7. Let's say I don't know how to count, and I accidentally say 6, 7, 8. I skipped the number 5. Well, this is going to mess up Minitab, isn't it? Because the class widths aren't all the same. Watch what happens. I'll click OK. And Minitab says, wait a minute, Eric, all the class widths have to be the same. Midpoints must be at equal intervals. It's saying, you messed up, and I can't do that. Go fix it, dude. It doesn't say dude. But anyway, you get the idea. Let me restart. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This time I remember the number 5. 6, 7, 8. All right, let's say that's as far as I get. I've set up a clear pattern. I'm making a mistake again, because my data actually went all the way up to 12. My highest number of siblings in my data set was 12. But this time, Minitab can figure out what I'm doing. It's going to figure out, well, he's going up by one each time. And it's going to tell me that I messed up, but it'll fix it for me. So I'll say, OK. And Minitab says, bins extended to encompass all data. So yes, you messed up, but I fixed it for you. I extended your classes so that it would include everything. And now you're going to see, look, Minitab has made the class width of 1, like I asked it to, and it's put each one of those into a separate bin. All right, let's do some other things to fix it. I want to change the title, Histogram of Siblings. That's not a very good one. So let me double click it. Just put your mouse on the title and double click it, and you get a dialog box that lets you change it. I could change the fonts, I could change the size, but what I really want to do is change the text itself. I don't want to say Histogram of Siblings. I want to say number of siblings of statistics students, except I have to spell that right, statistics students, and say OK. Perfect, right? What else could I do? I could similarly change this one, change the x-axis label. Just go to it, double click it, and change the words, number of siblings, and say OK. And so all of these things change. Let me show you a couple other things that you could do. You could 
change the colors of the bars. This blue is lovely, but maybe you don't want it to be blue. Maybe you want it to be green. So double click the bars and see how they're all highlighted with boxes around them. That means all of them are going to have this happen to them. And what I'm changing is the fill pattern. Right now the fill pattern is green, but I, it's set to automatic, which means Minitab gets to choose what it is. Maybe I want to choose it. So I'm going to say custom and I could say my background color is going to be uh, this green right here. Okay, it's pretty bright green. The boxes are still around these bars, but if I click somewhere else in the graph, it goes away. And wow, look at that green. But you know what? Maybe I want to set people who have no siblings, the only children apart from the rest of the graph. I want just this one bar to be red. So I'm going to click it. Now all of them are highlighted. I'm going to click it again so only that one's highlighted. And now I'm going to double click it fast. And I get my my dialog box back. I'm going to say the fill pattern here, I want to change custom, and I want to make it red. Say OK. And you'll see I got one red bar. I'll click so that that's not around it anymore. And I got the rest of them are green bars. Red and green. There we go. I could make all of these different and have rainbow effects. By the way, don't go crazy with color. If it becomes distracting, then it ruins the point. You should use color when it makes it easier for someone to read your graph and understand the point you're trying to make. And don't go crazy with it just because you can. Let me show you one other thing you could do with this graph. You could add numbers above each of these bars to tell you how tall they are. So I'm going to go anywhere in the graph I want to. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to right click. I'm not using my regular click. I'm right clicking. And you'll see it opens up a menu. And one of the choices is Add. So I'm going to go to Add. And what I want to add right now are what are called data labels. The labels of my data, and they're going to go above my bar. So I'm going to add data labels. I want to use Y value labels. So in other words, it's going to be the same as the height of the Y axis of whatever these heights are. So that's perfect. That's what I want. And I'll say OK. And currently they have little boxes around them. But if I just click anywhere outside of there, you'll see it has put numbers up here that show me how tall each one of the bars are. Pretty cool, huh? All right, one last thing I could do. I should probably show you this. A lot of times in a histogram, you want to indicate your sample size. I could have put that in the title just at the end here, wrote n equals 60. Or I could make what's called a subtitle, and it'll appear right under this. So again, right click anywhere in the graph, go to Add, and we're going to add a subtitle. And we're going to write in our subtitle n equals 30. And say OK. And it appears right there underneath the number of siblings. All right, so I have played with this graph. I have made it beautiful. I am ready to use it in my discussion board on Blackboard, maybe to put it into a PowerPoint or a Word document. That means I need to save it. And I need to save it in a way that I could use it in Word or PowerPoint or on Blackboard. So I'm going to go now up to the File menu. Everyone sees File up here. I'm going to click File. And one of my choices down here is Save Graph As. So I'm going to click Save Graph As. Now, its default is minitabgraph.mgf. The problem with that is I'll only be able to ever open that again in Minitab. I want to save it as a picture. So if I click that little arrow, it gives me some other choices. And you'll see one of my choices is JPEG or PNG. If you went further down, there are other choices, bitmaps and TIFFs. But JPEGs are probably the most common format to use for saving a picture. And it's 24-bit color. It means it should preserve your graph. Your graph should look great. All your colors should be there. So I would probably click this. So it's going to save it as a JPEG. I could give it a different title if I wanted to, choose which folder it goes into. This is like saving any file. But then later, I could insert that into Word. All right, I'm not actually going to save it now. I just wanted to show you how you might do that. We are very happy with this graph. I'm going to leave it there. But let me go back. I'm just going to click on my worksheet, and it's going to come up over the top of the graph there. I want to make another histogram now of the heights. I have the heights of some people, but I have both males and females. I want to make, essentially, two histograms side by side so that I compare, can compare the heights of the males and the females. Let's learn how we'll do that. So I'm going to go to Graph, and I'm still doing a histogram. And I'm actually still doing a simple histogram. So that's which one is highlighted. I'll click OK. All right. What is it that I want to graph? I want to graph the heights. That's what I want the histogram to be, is histograms of heights. So I'm going to double click height. 
But now, what I really want is two separate graphs, or maybe two graphs right next to each other, one for the males and one for the females. So I am making what are called multiple graphs. So I'm going to click on the button Multiple Graphs. Now here, you'll see I have two tabs, two choices. Multiple variables, are you making the two histograms of two different variables? Or are you making two histograms of the same variable, but for two different groups? I'm doing two different groups, so I'm not doing multiple variables. I want to have a by variable. I want to separate it by gender. So I'm going to click on by variables, and now I want my by variables. I could, I have two choices. Separate panels is going to put them on one large graph where they're next to each other, one right beside the other. Separate graphs would make them in two separate graphs that I could save as two separate files. Let's put them in separate panels so they'll be right next to each other. So I want to separate by, my by variable is gender. And I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to say OK. And you're going to see Minitab has made a histogram. Here's the females. Here's the males right next to it. The frequencies go all the way across, but the heights go from 62 to 74. And over here, they go from 62 to 74. Now, over here, I didn't really need the 62 or the 74, but Minitab is trying to make it so they have the exact same scale. When I want to compare two histograms, it's best if they have the exact same binning, the exact same classes, the exact same scale. And Minitab did that for me, so I could more easily compare the females and the males. Again, I could change titles, I could change the axis labels, anything I want, just like I did in the other graph.